Hi! In this video, we are going to cover um, solving a system of equations. We have a function x that depends on t and a function y that depends on t, and we have a system of equations. Um, it's the Virgil equation, so we have the derivative of x uh, equals 4x plus y, and the derivative of y equals 4y, and we are, we are interested in finding x and y in terms of t. Now to solve this problem, um, I'm going to um, like I'm going to show you all um, steps very explicitly, and then by the end I will I will tell you about um, like what happens when you when you look into this problem um, from like a more linear algebra point of view. So um, first note that uh, the second equation we have, the second ODE, the one for y is uh, an ODE that involves y and only y. So we know that um, the derivative of y is 4y. And um, at this point we should all know that functions that satisfy um, such equation um, are functions that are exponentials and we have uh, functions that take the form a constant and I'm, I'm going to denote that constant by C2 uh, times the exponential of 4 times t. So, um, this way, very quickly, we have found y. We have that the function y, a function of t, uh, takes the form constant times e to the 4t. Now, we, we still want to find x, so, um, so we, we can take, um, what we just found, we can use y equals constant times e to the 4t, we can insert that into the equation for x prime. So we have a very explicit equation for x prime. We find that x prime equals 4x plus y, and that's 4x plus c2 e to the 4t, and uh, that equation is equivalent to x prime minus 4x equals c2 e to the 4t, and that's, that's a first order equation. Um, and it's a linear equation, so we can use um, the integrating factor to to find x. Um, now, when we use the integrating factor, we want to find um, the exponential of whatever is besides x uh, inside an integral. So we have minus 4 in this case, and we are integrating with respect to t. Uh, that will give us the integrating factor, and in this case, the integrating factor turns out to be um, e to the 4 minus 4t. And once we find the integrating factor, we have that um, the derivative of um, the integrating factor times the function x corresponds to um, the function e to the minus 4t, so that's the integrating factor times the right-hand side of the equation. And uh, when we multiply e to the minus 4t by c2 e to the 4t, we get the constant c2 because um, e to the minus 4t times c to the 4t gives us e to the 0. And that's, that's a 1. So we have that um, the derivative of the function e to the minus 4t times x is a constant. And um, then that implies that e to the minus 4t times the function x is a line. And um, remember that uh, we have a function in terms of t. So the line will look like um, c2 times t plus a constant I will denote by c1. I'm denoting, um, I just forgot to mention that I denoted a constant related to y c2 by c2 because it's kind of like more natural. We have the second function, so we use c2. And now we see c1 coming up. And um, and uh, then we can say that we can see that the function x um, turns out to be what we have on the right hand side of, of the equality times c to the e to the 4t. So that's uh, c2 t e to the 4t for c1 e to the 4t. Okay, so. So this way we can see, or we have proved that uh, if x and y satisfy um, the system of equations we were given, then um, x has to take the form 
and let me just rewrite everything so that rearrange this expression so what we so we see c1 first we have c1 e to the 40 plus c2 t e to the 40 and then we have y equals c2 e to the 40 okay so okay so we we, we have um we have x and y as explicit as they can be because we don't have any initial conditions so we knew that there was there was going to be some parameters in the in the solution um if we were given information about um values of x and y at a point say at zero then we would be able to find c1 and c2 for instance if um x at zero was say one and y at zero was two then um we can see that c2 would have to be that value at zero um so so that would have to be oops there we have a two um so c2 would have to be zero oh sorry two and um, the value of, of x at uh, 0 is 1. And at the same time, we have uh, c1 e to the 4 times 0. So at c1. So we have that c1 is 1. So that would give us the explicit um, functions e to the 4t plus 2 uh, t. e to the 4t for x and then um, 2 e to the 4t for y okay um, now um, as I said um, in the beginning um, sometimes it is important to think of um, systems of equations as like ODEs as um, like systems that can be rewritten in terms of a matrix and um, and a vector. So let me just erase everything except for the solution we found to tell you about um, how maybe someone else would approach solving this problem. Um, so here we have solution we found is right there so so okay so we have the following um we have the following so we can actually rewrite this system as um x y the vector x y all that are prime equals four one zero four times x y and um, this is equivalent to having something like let's call it z prime equals a times z where a is a matrix we have the matrix 4104 And um, it turns out that uh, when we have a system of equations like this, z prime equals a z, and here we're thinking of z as um, the vector x y, um, the solution will be just as in the case we had just one equation, um, an exponential, and we have a constant times um, an exponential, but in this case. Uh, we can't have a constant because we have um, a matrix A, we have a vector Z, so it's, the constant will turn out to be a vector constant. So we'll have a constant and we can denote it by C1, C2. And I'm going to write it second. C1, C2. And here we will have the exponential just as if, if we were solving um, 
like um, just as if it was z prime equals a z, then z would be an exponential times a constant. But in the say the the when we think of of functions uh, like z that are vectors, then we the constant would be would actually be a constant vector. And this exponential is is something that can be found by using like the Taylor expansion of, of the exponential. Uh, but I'm not going to go into that, but I can tell you that um, when the matrix X is form, we say that the matrix is in the, in the Jordan canonical form, um, have the same number here, the diagonal, and then the one on top. That's a Jordan block or a, a matrix in the, in the Jordan form, a two by two matrix in the Jordan form. And the exponential of, of, of such um, matrix it takes a very special form. Um, we will have um, the following for for a matrix like that. Um, so we will have um, so here notice that at is four t t and four t, and here we have a zero. So what happens with the exponential is that we will take the exponential of the of the diagonal uh, part, and um, that will be e to the four t e to the four t, and then we will have um, for the top part we will have the exponential times t. So, so that's what we will have for um, matrices that look like this. The exponential of the matrix would be like the exponential of the diagonal. And then um, for the other part, we will have um, the exponential times the, the entry we have there. And then times C1 and C2. And if we expand this product, we find C1 times e to the 4t plus C2. Uh, I'm going to rearrange everything so it looks more natural. So t e to the 4t. And then for the bottom part, we have c2 e to the 4t. And, and that's that's exactly what we had for x and y. So here, x, y, x, y. So, so yeah, so this is, this is what we have for, for for x and y. Okay, so that's that's all I wanted to show you in this video, and I see that um, this part is a bit to the right, so let me just move it a bit. Um, I think that's going to be okay. Yeah, there you go. So um, yeah, so that's that's all I wanted to show you. If you if you um, if you have questions or if you you know, if you think um, maybe you have a different way of, of solving this problem, then I'll be happy to hear from you. I will be curious to know uh, an alternative solution. Um, but yeah, that's, that's all for this video. Bye-bye. Uh,